This lesson is on long division with two digit divisors. And what I mean by divisors are the numbers that would go outside the box. For example, in this problem, 400 divided by 20. 20 is outside of the box, so 20 is our divisor. 400 is our dividend, and our answer is our quotient. Students need to know that all those numbers have names to them. So these are two digit divisors. Now, if you haven't watched my other long division video with one digit divisors, please do that before you watch this one. All right, the first thing that I'm gonna have students do is box up the numbers just like they normally would so that each number has its own separate place to live. Now they wanna look at the number in the first box, which is four. Now for two digit divisors, I don't want students writing their multiplication facts. It's unnecessary. What I want them to do is say that 4 is much smaller than 20, so they know nothing times 20 is going to get me to 4. So they put a 0 at the top, and then they multiply. 0 times 20 is 0. So they put a 0 at the bottom and subtract. 4 minus 0 is 4. Now once they've subtracted, I want them to check the bottom number and make sure that this number is smaller than the divisor. And in this case it is, so we're good to move the 4 to the next box. So now in the next box, instead of working with 0, we're working with 40. Now, I don't want students to write their multiplication facts because they can count by 20s. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, etc., etc. So they want to figure out what times 20 is going to get them the closest to 40 without going over. Now if they want to use their fingers, they can. Or if they want to use tally marks, they can. But they should just count by 20s. Like 20, 40, 60. Well, 60 was too far. So what times 20 will get me 40? 20 times 1, 2. So 2 goes at the top. Then I multiply. 2 times 20 is 40. 40 goes at the bottom of the box and they subtract. 40 minus 40 is 0. Now, I want the students to check again. Is 0 less than 20? Yes, it is. So it's okay to move the 0 to the next box. Now they have 0 in the last box. What times 20 will get me 0? Zero? 0. So 0 goes at the top of the box. 0 times 20 is 0. Then they subtract. 0 minus 0 is 0. And there's no remainder. So my quotient, or my answer for this division problem, is 20. 20 times 20 would give me 400. Okay, let's do another example that's just a little bit different. Okay, for this example, 360 divided by 20. Again, we have a two-digit divisor and then our dividend and our answer is our quotient. First thing I want students to do is box up their numbers. Then they look at the numbers in the, the number in the first box, and that's a 3. Now they need to ask, is 3 less than 20? And it is. So even 20 times 1 is going to be too big. So we have to go with 20 times 0. So a 0 goes at the top of the box. 0 times 20 is 0. Goes at the bottom of the box. 3 minus 0 is 3. Now they need to check, is 3 less than 20? Yes. So it's OK to move it to the next box. So my new number is 36. Now again, they don't have to write facts for 20 because they can count by 20s. They can say 20, 40, okay? 40 is bigger than 36, so they've gone too far. So the only one they can use is 1. So 1 times 20 is 20. So 36 minus 20 is 16. Here's where it changes just a little bit. In this case, it was one digit that we were moving, but now we're moving two digits to the next box. Now 16 is less than 20, so we know we've done correctly, done the steps correctly, but we're moving two digits to the next box. So what I want students to do is underline those two digits in the next box. And I also want them to underline one digit of their quotient. So now instead of saying what times 20 will get me to 160, they can say what times 2 will get me to 16. It works with smaller numbers and it's easier for them to imagine. What times 2 will get me to 16? Well, if they need to count by 2's, they can. If they need to write their facts, they can. But most students should know by now that 2 times 8 is 16. So then I want them to check and make sure 20 times 8 
down at the bottom. Now they can mark out the zero and bring it down, and then 8 times 2 is 16. So 20 times 8 is 160, exactly where we needed to go. So at the top of the box, they put what number they multiply by, 8. 8 times 20 is 160. 160 minus 160 is 0, so there's no remainder. So my quotient is 18. Now this is how we work the problems that end in a 0. Now we're going to go one step farther and work with problems that don't end in zeros. For example, if I have 533 as my dividend divided by my divisor of 24. Okay, for this problem I still want them to box up their numbers to make it simpler so they have one thing to focus on at a time. Next I want them to estimate this number. 24 will estimate or round to 20 because 4 is less than 5 so 2 will stay the same. So up here this is going to be their magic number that they're working with. Now they say, is 5 less than my divisor? Yes it is. So I know nothing times 24 will get me smaller than 5 except for 0. So 0 goes at the top of the box, 0 times 24 is 0. 5 minus 0 is 5. Now they need to ask, is 5 less than 24? Yes it is, and it's one digit so we don't have to do anything special. We can just move it to the next box. So my new number is 53. Now. I, it's a lot easier for students to count by a round number like 20 than a number like 24. So they can use 20 as their marker, as their jumping off point. Count by 20s and see how close you can get to 53 without going over. Well, we can do 20, 40, 60, 60 is too far, so 20 times 2. So this gives them a number to estimate with so that they're not just continuously writing facts or they're not continuously guessing. So at the bottom they need to check 24 times 2 and see how close they've gotten. 4 times 2 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4, so 48. It is logical to assume that 24 times 2 is the closest that we're going to get, but there's a way they can check it. They put a 2 at the top because that's what we multiply by, 2 times 24 we figured out is 48, so then 53 minus 48 is 5. This is how they check to make sure that they couldn't have gotten any higher. If it's less than 24, they know they did the right thing and they're good to go. So 5 is less than 24, so they're fine to move 5 to the next box. Now for this problem, it's 53 again. Well, they already did it for this problem, so again they should say 2 times 24 is 48, that's as close as I'm going to get. 53 minus 48 is 5. Again, 5 is smaller than 24, so my remainder is going to be 5. So my quotient for this problem is 22 remainder of 5. Okay, let's look at another example. 